Yo, in this video, I'm going to ex be explaining five tips to give you the best chance of winning a, a 1v3 off spawn. I'm going to have a couple of background clips running first while I explain the uh, tips that I want to give you guys. And then I'm going to break down a couple of clips that I have that hopefully will help you guys get a better understanding of what I mean. So I'm going to tell you guys what the, the five tips are. First tip is not to challenge until you have the proper loadout. The second one is to try to play off your teammates contact. Uh, the third is to try to break the enemy team up if they're challenging you. The fourth tip is going to be to play patiently. Look for your enemies to make mistakes. And the fifth tip is to be confident in your decision making. All right, so I'm going to break these down a little bit more. So we're going to start off with the first tip, which is don't challenge until you have the proper kit um, this means you know until you have at least two clips of ammo and a weapon that you're comfortable with challenging uh you know at least a white armor and it would be a bonus if you spot some armor swaps in a building you know for later when you're trying to challenge enemies but it's easy to get <clears throat> distracted by trying to challenge an enemy in a different building you don't really know what kind of loadout they got so it's easy to get pretty much clapped out um by like a mastiff or something that they found on the ground. If you land on a bot and get loot first, that's fine. But running at another enemy in a different building without knowing where his team is or what he has could be dangerous, especially if you don't have armor or a good weapon yourself. So it's smarter to be a bit patient and play for de uh, decent weapons. The second tip I wanna give you guys is try to play off your teammates contact. Uh, play good positioning. Lurk a bit, jiggle peek corners, find out where your enemies are. Uh, if they engage your teammates first, play off their damage, let the enemies get a bit focused on them, and then position yourself to be able to, you know, beam them, uh, then duck back into cover when they spot you and when they try to shoot back. This doesn't always happen, but it is, you know, it, it's very good to take advantage of this sort of situation because you could potentially get a knock based off your positioning or, you know, based off how much knowledge you have on, you know, the enemy's location locations and how much damage your teammates do uh, try to focus someone you know one of the other enemies with your teammates even if they don't do a lot of damage it's you know it could be a free knock or you know free damage and that's just playing the fight to your advantage the third tip i want to give you guys is try to break the enemy team up if they are challenging you take them to a building with doors multiple levels and you know armor swaps if possible play for the 1v1s try to get them to split up and single out one of them to take on at a time you can even try to rotate them back to your teammates for a little bit of extra help don't really heavily rely on the random teammates though um, the odds are that they won't do more than 200 damage per fight so use them as a distraction when you're fighting the enemies <clears throat> It's 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 much harder to fight three enemies <clears throat> when they're triple challenging you or when they're chasing you and shooting you in the back. Um, so it's just a better idea to try to single them out as much as possible. Um, the odds are that you know typically one of them will lead in the chase, and sometimes you can play a door while they're chasing, turn around, beam one, you know, get shots on him. And if he backs up, another one's probably going to be chasing. So reposition yourself, you know, get to some high ground potentially to try to shoot them while they're trying to catch up to you. Um, or, you know, <clears throat> play some doors, play some zip lines. Just try to get some distance in between you and all three of them because <clears throat> it just makes for a better fight um, when you can, you know, put when you can turn around and do damage to one of them at a time as opposed to them all three or two of them shooting you um, while you're trying to focus down one of them. The fourth tip I wanna give you guys is to play a bit patiently. Uh, look for the enemies to make mistakes, like running out in the open, uh, over peeking, peeking super wide, um, or even listen for potential close healing or reviving. Catching them off guard uh, means that you could potentially get free shots 
or a free knock. But try not to overcommit. Uh, try to back up and play as much cover as possible. Uh, if you get cracked, they'll likely try to challenge and chase you. So make sure to try to back up and keep distance when you get cracked. Enough to get to a door and like pop a bat or hop down some stairs, you know, turn a corner and pop a bat. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the odds are that they are going to make some mistakes and capitalizing on those could, you know, turn the tide of the entire fight. So be on the lookout for them crossing streets, you know, play a bit of height uh, when they're trying to push you or, <clears throat> you know, play corners so that you can jiggle peek, see what they're up to, see if they're pushing your uh, teammates. Just just play for um, play for some uh, mistakes because, you know, we all make mistakes. The last tip I want to give you guys is to be confident in your decision making. Try not to hesitate too much when deciding whether or not to challenge, um, whether or not you should be taking heals or, you know, if you should be if you should or shouldn't be pushing a certain fight. Split decision making saves time and it gives the enemy team less time to close in on you and you could potentially win a fight based on how fast you react. So I think it's pretty important to be able to make a decision pretty quickly and stick to it. Um, if it's not the right decision, you'll definitely learn from it, um, but it's better than not reacting and giving your enemies more time and space to close in on you or for them to decide you know what the best play should be so try to take advantage of being the first to move the first to react the first to challenge or the first to run or the first to heal because um <clears throat> you know if you make that first play it could be you know the best play that you could have possibly made you know they could still be pushing. They still could be healing or popping a bat. You know, if you popped your bat as soon as you got around a corner, um, you know, you're up. You're at, an, you're at an advantage. And that could definitely win you a fight. All right, so previously while I was explaining the tips that I wanted to give you guys. I had a couple of clips running and the last few clips were of me landing off spawn. So I'm going to try to explain, you know, these that I have the time for. So in this clip, um, I'm pretty much trying to get kitted. I don't really find too much, uh, up until a certain point. Um, Trying to stay aware of where the enemies are. Uh, that's why you see me jiggle peeking, looking around the box, playing at, and I've spotted them. So I'm gonna go for a challenge here against the Octane. <clears throat> and his teammate pulls up, and I didn't take too much damage from the Octane, so I'm able to challenge here. And <clears throat> my teammate comes in and shoots up the last kill. So I played that pretty well. I saw that his Wraith teammate was really far. So that's why I took the push on the Octane because I knew his positioning. So the next team comes up, but they don't challenge at the same time. So I'm able to pretty much just, uh, just, just wide chow uh, because they come one by one. So I'm healthy. I barely got cracked. So I continue to challenge. Didn't need to queue, didn't need to back up. And that's two squad wipes there. What are the life bars doing? This is a final clip here. Um, it's a one, 1v3. So the first fight I take, uh, I challenge the lifeline on the stairs and I immediately back up to a door to heal. Uh, that, was a, that was a good challenge because it gets one of the enemies down before uh, the other two could close in on my position. So... Now I take that time where they're closing in to get healed so that I can challenge the other two. I'm aware that one is downstairs fighting my teammate while one is pushing my door. And I actually get to juke this guy with a bit of movement, get some free shots on him behind, take the challenge downstairs because I know he's low, especially compared to me. And I'm looking for the thirst here because this teammate is not, this teammate is not pushing 
you know, as hard as he should. So I'm looking for the thirst so I can get an armor swap because my armor is a bit low. And this is a 1v1 because I broke the two, I broke the other two down and I'm able to just challenge the last guy. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Uh, I haven't done too many videos like this, but if it gets a good reception, then I will make sure to continue doing these. Much love, guys. Peace.